Good morning, everybody. It's Jane Johnston with the Bar Hill Group at Remax Camosa, and I'm here with Andrew Plank. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning. How are you going? You've got your puppy with you today. I do. She's with me all the time, but today she wants an early walk, so she's barking. Mm -hmm. Nice. I can't hear you. I have to turn up my volume. It's me. I had my... Is that better? Uh, yes, my much. Directional mic on. Okay. So we're at our last show before the end of the year. I know. I like that you got the fire lit and it's all cozy. Yeah. And I your have um, decks out. Yeah. And and show us your your little holiday festivity that you were you're leaning forward. Come on, lean back. There you go. There it is. Yes. Very cool. <laughs> I made it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> So uh, yeah, maybe I'll have it like this today. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I'm always bah humbug until you know, till the visited by the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future, and the night before Christmas, and then, then I'm all like, Merry Christmas, ho ho ho. Did you decorate that tree in behind you? Uh no. It Is that a decorated out. tree? It's a decorated thing. Yes, my. Yeah, Kim did that. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's kind of fun. We have a real. We need treat. a Christmas mug. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, so let's jar. get down to. Pardon? Christmas mason jar. <laughs> How was your last week? It's been slow for me because um, I'm my listings. I'm waiting till the new year for those. Although we're going to be discussing you know, why it might not be such a, you know, bad time to list. Um, but uh, been waiting on those. And then um, my buyers, we really just, there's not much out there. Although I'm going to be out in soup today for a building inspection and we're hoping to um, win out on something tomorrow. I'm just looking at the total listings actually like, you know, in the core. So let me just look here, residential active and i'm just going to do houses in the core west shore and peninsula and single family homes we have 228 right now to sell yeah between 1400 or so realtors there's a lot of new realtors coming in i think we've said that recently but i'm seeing a lot of we just had our christmas um uh, our royal page christmas party last week it was a lot of fun um a lot of new faces a lot of people um you know and I got to meet um, uh, Wendy, uh, who's been commenting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, awesome. So what did she yeah. say? Uh, she just said, came up and introduced herself and said hi. And uh, yeah. <laughs> did she feel like she knew you? I always find that's the funny part. Is uh, I don't know how she felt, but it was, you know, it was nice. You know, it's, uh, you know we're famous now. <laughs> Walking down the street, people walking up just I know you. <laughs> That's fun. Anyway, so funny. Yeah. Okay, can you angle your camera down a little so you're or sit up a bit so we're our heads are at the same height? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Andrew's my brother from another mother. Yeah. Apparently you're okay, so you're real hey, okay. You told you me before, look, you remind, I remind you of your real brother. I'm sorry out there to change your <laughs> brother. Tim, <laughs> it's okay. All right. Uh, so let's talk about stats and then we can get on our subject of to list or not to list. And we can talk about our own history with that. So uh, here we go. I, I get the feeling you don't like the Christmas decoration in the background. So I just, I, I feel like I have to come back to this. Go ahead. You just asked, you know, if we did that and it wasn't really too clear if you were approving or not. I'm just. I I'm like it. For, okay. Okay. Just needed to get that out of the way. <laughs> it's kind of uh, Charlie Brownish. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it is kind of Charlie Brownish. We have a very beautiful full tree upstairs. I'll take it for a tour later if you like. Okay. Are we going <laughs> to do the stats or not? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, this reminds me of when we first got into real estate. <laughs> okay. 
I'll do the top part, you do the bottom. So for December, we're comparing December 2021. Uh, so obviously we're only halfway through the month compared to December 2020, the total month last year. Yeah. There were 190 unconditional sales uh, so far this year or this December compared to 631 in December of 2020. And, and I will tell you that that was a high number. Usually we're around 400. Um, new right. listings, 236 so far. And then uh, sales, 450. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm totally messing this up. Cut. Where are you going? <laughs> Come back. <laughs> I don't know where you went. Okay. Uh, we're going to just edit that. <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> Comparing December 2021 to December 2020, we are halfway through the month this year. We have 190 unconditional sales. I don't expect that to get much higher um, after the 20th because no. most lawyers' offices and uh, anybody who's doing conveyancing like notary publics are closed. For the Christmas That's holidays. True. Although that doesn't mean you, I mean, you can still go unconditional on a property and close in late January or, you know, February or what, whatever. This is tracking when a sale went unconditional. So you don't need your lawyer at that point. But Jane's, Jane's absolutely correct. We're not going to see a lot of people, I think, and I hope. Um, first of all, there will be some people listing more than maybe normal, but but the sales are still going to be really, really low for the next few weeks. And especially in the weeks, the week leading up to Christmas, the week after Christmas, New Year's, people are just not as active. So the majority of sales have already happened for this month. That's my call. Okay, so we're at 190 <laughs> <laughs> for December 30th, 13th compared to 631 for the whole month last year, which was very high and normally it is around 400. Okay, new listings is 236, and we had 456 last year. Mm -hmm. So, and active listings, 876 this year compared to 1,279 last year. Yep. And you can do the second part. I shall, but I, I just, you know, something was triggering, triggering me. I was triggered um, by the active listings stat there. Um, this 876 is so, you know, we currently, as of, December 13th have 876 active listings. That 1279, is that the, the highest number we had throughout the month or the number we had on the 13th? Total There's, active listings, I think. Because uh, that's going to bump up and down um, throughout the month here, our active listings stat for December. So it's the other ones which kind of like add up, this one's going to sort of more cycle up and down. You know, you're anyway. kind of making me laugh because we look at this stat every month. <laughs> I know, I know, but you know, it's funny because I, I don't think I've really sort of tweaked to the fact that when we're going partway through the month on that one, it's um, it's one that sort of ranges up and down as opposed to being additive. Anyway. Well, I always like to look at it in term like uh, the second set of stats that we have here, the market watch. I always find like the whole week is very interesting because that really gives you your eye on the pulse of what's happening. Mm -hmm. So. New listings. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Take it so, away. In, so in the last seven days, we've had 121 new listings go live on the um, multiple listing service. 125 properties out of the active listings went pending. Um, of the listings that were on, there were 18 uh, price decreases and four price increases. Three properties went back on market after coming off market for whatever reason. 118 were um, marked as sold, uh, 14 expired, and one withdrawn. So when um, he's saying sold, that means they completed and the new buyers took possession. And um, compared to last year, uh, that is, I think, lower because last year we had over 600 sales. Yeah, and again, we'll probably see a lot of um, property. And sold is when people are actually generally paying for the money and moving in. So we're going to see probably not a lot of that happening over the over the holiday season. Uh, so again, that number is probably representing the higher number we're going to see this month. 
So I have a client who she's in new construction and we're trying to figure out her closing date. And um, it's unfortunate because, you know, everybody wants to spend Christmas in their new home, but because it's new construction and there are delays that are kind of unavoidable actually due to COVID and the storms and all the stuff. So we may not be able to get them in before Christmas, but we're yeah. trying. And this is one of the things that is repeatedly, you know, comes up for new construction and we need to really remind our clients of is um, if it's still a hole in the ground or even if it's pretty substantially completed, there can be delays. And um, it's not like a home that's already fully built and everybody's kind of lined up to move. Uh, you may not get possession and I've come across that many, many times, or even sometimes that the, the, the building um, project doesn't actually move forward. They don't yeah. have sales or something to really dramatic changes in their, in their disclosure system. Um, right. And, so, and you need the occupancy certificate, then you need the money, then you need the conveyancing, then you have possession. So there's yeah. a couple of steps. So all they're thinking about the buyer is like, can I just get in? but mm -hmm. we have to process it all. And we talk about this holiday season and, you know, like um, regardless of your, um, you know, beliefs or religion or what have you, this time of year, people tend to be um, doing vacations and, you know, the majority of people are, a lot of people are celebrating Christmas and taking that time off. So it can be an opportunity for some people but it's going to, you know, good luck if you want to have a closing during that period, because most of the most of the lawyers who are already quite busy are not going to be uh, working. They often take those times as holidays. So when we talk holidays, we're not just saying this is a celebration. This is also um, a time where there's less availability to do business as a whole. Well, uh, so would you list your home right now? Good segue, Jane. Thank you. Um, well, I like my home I'm, and I have no plans to move, but if I was, um, if I was planning to move and uh, I would consider listing now, um, I find that normally this time of year is not a great time to be listing as we've sort of been talking about some of the reasons why, uh, at the same time right now, I'd say we have, you know, five to 10 active buyers for every listing on, on the market. And we don't know what the spring is going to bring. The spring could be an even better time to sell. I'm not saying it's not going to be a great time to sell in the spring, but things can change on a dime. We've seen that before in real estate. And if you want to sell your home, now is definitely not, not a bad time to sell. What if you you have, like, so normally I would tell people who were in a regular market um, that wait, because I think that in a regular market, like in a balanced market, it just is naturally quiet at this time of year. I have listed previously and um, my dog is, can you hear her? <laughs> Come here, Ginger. Come here. Um, in a regular market, <laughs> uh, people are just willing to take a rest and they go away. And usually we have a big winter storm and stuff, but I find right now there's still that angst. Like buyers are like, I need to find a place. I need to find a place. Even if they're in a rental and I'm like, just wait, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they, you know, they're still going for it. And, and well, I tell them if the right house comes up, then let's write an offer. Yeah, it definitely would be advising buyers um, not to wait for spring to buy. Uh, if the right property comes up still to take an action on it. We are expecting to see some measures. Again, we've talked about this before from the government to try to, and they, and they are really, it sounds like they're very committed to this, to try to soften the blow in the market, bring in a cooling off period for buyers. Um, uh, mortgage rates are looking like they might be edging up while well, they are edging up. So there's, there's gonna be some extra pressure on the market to adapt, but it, we just, I've not seen, um, how do I put this? It just feels like the market will continue to go regardless. I think maybe in the new year, we should, on our metrics that we look at every week, we should look at interest rate and just see, because I think fixed rates are going up, but from what I've heard, variable rates are not. Right. Yeah. So then, you know, it makes sense to discuss both because a lot of people do go with variable rates. 
And, you know, we have mortgage brokers who come in and talk to us about what kind of factors affect these various rates, whether fixed or variable. And they're two very different kind of metrics and factors is what makes these things change. We've got, um, you know, record, hello, Bob's, this is so, we have record breaking, uh, like, keep going, <laughs> record breaking inflation, uh, you know, happening uh, in the States and probably Canada, you know, highest inflation in the last 40 years or so. Uh, so that could mean, I believe that could, could affect um, variable rates in the future. Uh, because variable rates are going to be uh, based on the overnight lending rate and overnight lending rate is going to be based on, you know, government of Canada's um, requirements. I don't know. It gets, it gets all opaque after that. You're like about accounting or financing, but <laughs> I'm losing the plot. But the point is, the point is these things can change. Great. So I think, and also like with all the talk over what's going to be happening with rates, I think we just keep an eye on it so that we can, uh, uh, for me, I just want to be more informed because, uh, you know, if you're on a variable rate and you want to all of a sudden convert, you can do so. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, how many buyers are you working with right now? Oh, scads, but not actively because you know, they're, they're receiving updates from me. I'm watching for new listings that might fit them, but a new listing that comes in that might fit them is either outside of their price, their, their price range, because when we started working together, the prices were here and now they're here. Um, or there's just nothing to show them. Or, you know, I try to find things. I watch the hot sheets. There's just very little to send. So I'm working with, I don't know, like, if the right properties came along, probably 25, 30 buyers, but, um, but really actively maybe five to 10. Yeah. I find, I, I find the, like probably five to 10 that when I'm actively going out and I'm doing one offs right now, hold on my door. Is cold. Yeah. One offs is in like, in, 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 we've seen some of our colleagues posting to social media about this on our various, uh, um, you know, realtor social media channels, but, um, you know, you set up to show 15 properties um, of the, what looks like it's available. And then you end up narrowing that down to about five because you make your showing requests and then discover that 10 of those are already under contract. And then by the time you show the property, uh, there's a few more under contracts. You might end up having one or two to show out of the 15 that you, you or your buyers had identified as properties they wanted to view. And you know what I, actually I had an interesting um, um, question come up in an online group that I'm a part of. So we were talking like, what do you say when an agent says, where did you get the comparables for pricing this listing? And uh, it, it was an agent in the U.S., and she's actually already had two offers, but they haven't come together. They didn't, it wasn't that they didn't come together on price and come together on dates and stuff. So uh, she's like, how do I respond to that? So I said, well, first of all, in rising market, there aren't really comparables because it's uh, the market's rising and it, sometimes it rises more quickly than others, but also the market value is determined between what a seller is willing to let it go for and what a buyer is willing to pay. And so if there's no inventory, a buyer is willing to pay more to get in and a seller wants more because yeah, they you know, then have to go and find a place. Yeah. You kind of got to look into the intention. Like those, that question could come from a number of different sort of sources or reasons behind the question. And, you know, why did you price it that way? You're way overpriced and you're being ridiculous. Or, you know, why did you price it that way? Are you trying to get multiple offers and make, you know, 50, you know, make half the real estate board run through this property and show it to all their buyers who are desperate and they have false hope because you've priced it 200,000 under its actual value. Why did you price it this way? Um, are your sellers crazy? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and, and what's your motive? What's your seller's motivation is, you know, we, we ask sometimes these questions just to try to shake shake a little bit of answer out of the agent and find out some motivation. I had a listing on um, Lockside Drive and uh, it was listed a long time ago. 
with a different realtor who was a great realtor and or who is a great realtor and they just they didn't get any showings mm -hmm. and um so when i listed it well first of all we did a major thing we cut down a tree that was between them and the view they had this tree that that had grown up like literally the whole window width and it was mm -hmm. right beside the house and it made the house really dark so anyway we cut the this tree down planted other trees tree. oh, okay wow. And then, uh, uh, when the, so when was pricing it, I was thinking, okay, well, the location of it was between the highway and Lockside Drive, mm -hmm. so right beside the highway. Yeah. So it's like I, I you know, you don't want to price it up here because mm -hmm. it's right beside the highway. And so I got you know a little flack from sellers or uh, not sellers from um, buyers saying you know, you price this house too low and all this stuff. And I'm like, well, a few years ago, nobody was looking at this house, like no viewings. And mm. I've priced it higher than then. Anyway, yeah. we did get no, offers. It's true because people also, I mean, everyone's an armchair critic and, and, and knows pricing so well. But, you know, we have both seen that location is really important in real estate. And that's the mantra that everyone talks about. And when you're right on the highway and you've got highway noise and, um, and so forth, then it, it's going to take a hit on the value, all things being equal. And um, I advise all my buyers, even if they're really interested in that property, because it's the only one that fits their, their needs right now, you've got to think about what things are going to be like in a different marketplace where you're one of 20 similar properties, but yours is the only one on the highway. You know, if people are going to overlook it and overlook it and overlook it until you can incentivize them with enough of a price discount. And so you're, you're, you're in a, negative situation at all times. So last year I had, I had a listing in um, a chosen that was on a sloping lot and mm -hmm. um, uh, you went through it on Duke road. Anyway, the sellers were like, I think we're going to take it off the market for Christmas. And I said, you know, actually now is the time to keep it on the market because there's so there's going to be so few listings and yep. anybody looking right now is going to be very motivated. I suggest that you go keep it on the market. It's okay. Put up your Christmas decorations. And they um, they toned it down, but they still kept it up. And then we got an offer, of course, and, and then it sold. But, um, you know, I think that is a very typical perspective of a seller that they don't want to be bothered with people coming through. Over the holidays. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you're, um, you not only generally when you have your home listed for sale, you have to keep it in pristine condition, but when you're coming and going and you've got um, maybe plans to see family and friends, um, you're shopping for turkeys or cranberries or what have you and fighting off the hordes at Costco and thrifties and so forth. Um, you don't want to have to run back home to clean up just for a showing. And, and also, you know, it can be fun to make your home all festive, but it, it's going to be a little bit fuller. And we usually say declutter and make it pretty, pretty bland. So you, you can do a marketing Christmas, but it's not the same as Christmas. I think too, honestly, you know, you want to concentrate on being with friends and family. You don't want to be thinking about the business of selling your home if you can, and maybe just take a break from it during that, that period of time. Um, I have, I want to share um, a, uh, a link this is what, something a client sent me. Uh, oh, is that on comments or no? I just, maybe you can share that if yeah. that didn't share publicly. But uh, share a link uh, to a uh, Vancouver Sun article. And it was why real estate agents are urging Canadians not to wait for spring to sell their home. And one of my, one of my uh, clients mentioned this, this article to me. And um, it's essentially what we've been talking about here you know, why now may not be a bad time to sell. And, and generally agents do recommend waiting till the spring, but uh, it goes into some detail about, you know, low supply versus, you know, some areas are better than others, like Victoria is pretty mild. So we have low supply and we're not in a super harsh winter. This is the one thing I would say with listing your home right now is, mm -hmm. We've all seen property listings that have like snow in the front yard or on the on the roof. 
Um, you go to launch your, the home on uh, a weekend and you end up with, you know, a uh, atmospheric river. Uh, and, um, and, and it's just, and you'd plan an open house, but nobody's coming. So these are, and, and, or if there's a cold snap or what have you. So it can be a little bit more hard, difficult to predict. Um, at the same time though, you know, supply and demand, there are so many buyers out there and new buyers coming out at all the time that it's really still worth doing. But anyway, this talks through the pros and cons. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a high maintenance dog today. Seems that way. Why don't you get a doggy door on there? Good idea. Go lie down. <laughs> you've got your, you've got your wrapping way. all out. I see you've got your wrapping all out and ready to go, but I can't <laughs> see the presents. So, so I can't see what you got me for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh god i think we should just delete the show <laughs> I, i'm okay with that it's so bad <laughs> like, when is my dog wanted to go in and out three times oh my god I, I think i think it's endearing and people will love it uh, okay Jane. it's a ginger day she's ginger centric <laughs> okay. so um Okay, what you were saying though is is uh, interesting to me because sometimes okay, there's a few things. First of all, there's a nat natural rhythm to real estate that uh, will follow the seasons. There are also times when people uh, naturally want to list their homes, and it's usually after holidays because they've had a discussion with their partner, and they're like mano a mano. Okay, let's make a change. We actually have time to discuss this. And then they make the decision and then they list the house. And or, then or they they realize over the holidays because they're spending more time together that they hate each other and it's time to sell the house. There's a lot of there's a lot of family changes over the holidays as well, we find. I'm just yes. saying. These things, <laughs> yes. these things come out. Yes, agreed. And then um and so what I've realized over the course of my career is I used to kind of like try and force things and uh you know I'd have like an open house on Mother's Day or an open house on Father nobody would come by and so I've stopped doing that and I just kind of decide okay you know what I'm gonna just receive whatever the energy is out there and if uh it happens to be like it looks like it's a good weekend for open houses or whatever to list a property yeah like you I see. have become yeah. more in tune you okay you've gone zen yeah. absolutely you know like you cannot you know force that square peg into the round hole and real estate is all about making you know letting there's the traditional view of the real estate agent who's like out there driving to make sales and make you know get people into homes and um, meet a quota or what have you and then there's the and I mentioned our Christmas party, but I was talking to some great young agents, and their attitude and it, you know it reflects I think our attitude is you know what I'm trying to do out there is help people to understand what they're what they're looking for and get them to you know the right fit for themselves and their family. And it's not about it's not about talking someone into buying something. Although he did mention this one particular agent, and I agree that sometimes. Sometimes you need to help help people come to a decision that they might be a little bit on the fence about, as if with a rising market like we've been talking about, uh, if you're a little hesitant, you may not get in, and if you don't get in, then you're going to lose out on you're going to be paying an extra hundred thousand dollars. So there's that, that frank discussion to be had, but it's not about forcing a sale. Go ahead. Yeah. Tim, go ahead. So that being okay. said, sometimes um, people list a property on a Friday and we have a big storm, which has happened. Uh -huh. And so I have been the agent that has gone out in the big storm and shown the property because nobody else is going to. And we write the offer super quick <laughs> so yeah. that we can get the accepted offer for my client. And that has been um, like recognizing the opportunity when it comes is, is important, especially like in, if it was a special and unique home, which yeah. this was. Hey, Jane, so, look over there. Look over there. Look. Look. Okay. So when there's a distraction, 
whether it's a change in the market or, or something big in the news or a holiday, our eyes are off of the prize. And, and you're right, I've seen that many times and, and it's a great time as an opportunity as a buyer to, for that one property that just listed that, that nobody else is looking at. And generally, Jane, do you find like, if, if I find a property that's listed on a Sunday or on a holiday, um, it's because somebody has called up their agent and said, I just want to sell and I got to get it on the market as quick as I can, or there's not a lot of strategy put into it. And maybe there's some desperation and there's an opportunity for buyers. It's not something that's been really thought out or planned out um, and launched with a plan of like, we're going to look at offers at a certain date and time and some, some extra protections for those, those sellers, unfortunately. So when something is kind of done from the hip, um, then for, for, for agents who are working with buyers, there's an opportunity. Yeah. And I think it's just like, a, I think the thing is, what I tell people is, okay, the strategy is you're going to buy in the spring, but let's keep our eyes open right now. And for sellers, the strategy is we're going to like whatever the strategy is. So it's either list now because you, because it is still a good market hmm. or uh, it's list in the spring when you know you're going to have more inventory to choose from on the buying side. And what do you think of the argument where people say, you know, I don't want to have a false start, you know, um, generally this time of year is slow or I, I want to put it on the market, but I want to take it off again. And then it'll look like it's been a failed listing. It'll look like, you know, if it doesn't sell in this first round, um, you know, and traditionally there's like longer days on market over this time of year and stuff. So we're kind of fighting against that sort of traditional mindset so i've had that where i've listed two properties actually in the past over different years and where the seller's like well if the if the ratio the list to sale ratio is really good in december let's list it in december but uh i found often the snowstorm or whatever in both cases have has come in and so we've just relisted it in january and i find most people are forgiving of that <laughs> so um yeah, and just fresh start. It's funny because I'm working uh, with a realtor right now, and that realtor said, you know, I, I think it's uh, misrepresenting the market if you relist. And I'm like, mm. well, sometimes you just need to restart because realtor.ca takes those listings off somebody's search because they have a check mark that says only new listings. Did you know that? If somebody's doing realtor.ca and not working directly with an agent, then they're one of those people who will probably be working with an agent soon, or they're not really a true buyer. But I do, um, I don't monitor that exactly, but I do know that, you know, anything that's been on market for a little while begins to look stale. And there are many reasons to relaunch um, because you want someone to have a fresh fresh look at the place and there may be something about it that that did miss there was that missed launch that missed opportunity despite our best efforts to provide a really great launch of that property um, we realized after it's listed that it's just not you know the market's not picking up what, what we're putting down maybe it's been marketed as um, a retirement home for uh, empty nesters and it's really uh, we're realizing that everybody that's coming through is, is younger couples maybe it's time to re you know Take it down, relaunch it with a whole new uh, write-up. Some change up the photos. Um, again, if there's photos with snow in the in the in the yard and it's a listing in the spring, you you don't want that because people are gonna you don't want to reuse those photos. Um, people will really realize it's been around for a long time. And there's always a subset. We were talking about this for timing, and this is why over the holidays it can work. There's this pool of buyers that have been looking for a long time and it's sort of, it's always in existence, this big pool of buyers. But then there's always new people coming into the market. There's people coming out of the market, but people coming into the market. And those people are going to look not just at the new listings, they're looking at everything on the inventory. And if they see your home and it compares to what else is out there and you're one of few to choose from because you're listed over the holidays. And they are, they're in that mode of like, I just want to buy something then you have a much better chance of selling. You can't catch a fish if your hook's not in the water. Ooh. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> okay. 
I agree with that. And I also will say that once a buyer has your home on their list to view, mm -hmm. and if you don't allow that viewing, they're gone. Rarely will yes. they come back. This is something I come up with. Uh, this is something that comes up often is, you know, oh, you know, I'm tired of showings or, you know, I, this is, I don't want to have showings uh, between this yeah. hour and this hour on these days. And, uh, and then invariably we get a request and it's their choice, you know, if they want to have it or not, but the more open you make, you know, open arms, you're going to have more people coming in to see your home. And those people often will not come back for a second look. And I will sense. say there is something to be said about your mindset as a seller that, that um, I'm going to sound like I'm part of the freaking woohoo crew, but no. it's totally people perceive your mindset. And um, when you get discouraged or when you're negative about selling your home, people, I don't know why they perceive it, they get a feeling and then it, it doesn't happen. And uh, like I've had sellers who, um, when we were uh, listing their home, they would be across the street in a car. And it's mm. like people <laughs> feel like they're being watched and they are being watched. Yeah. No, there's messages in everything we do. And the sellers, you know, the point of, you know, what we try to coach our clients to do in terms of decluttering and, and making the home as available as possible and, and doing some prep to make it sell is all to help them have a very fast and efficient sale uh, for the best price. But if, if they don't take that advice, um, that's their business. But the more roadblocks you put up and the more as, as buyers and their agents come through, you pick up things consciously and unconsciously as you go through a house. We all have those conversations with our buyers as we're looking through a home and we're, we're trying to understand who the sellers are, what their motivation is. Um, because if you do like the home, you want to make an offer that the seller is going to respond to. But when a well, seller is saying roadblock, you know, you can't come in on, until these little hours and roadblock, um, we haven't really cleaned up the place very much and roadblock, we haven't done these little fixes that are kind of normal. You start to go, I don't know that these people are going to be, oh, and roadblock, the price is, is higher than everyone else because the seller says, well, somebody can always make an offer. But the buyer is saying, this person doesn't seem too reasonable to me. Yeah, they don't want to sell. Yeah. Yeah. So some people say, like, how do you, um, uh, I, I often find actually when I'm working with a buyer and seller, often their mindset, if it, if it starts to flow really easily, the mindset's very similar. It's very interesting. Yeah. So like people who are easygoing usually have easygoing buyers and uh, things just flow right through. Sometimes if you have a difficult seller who like, as you said, put up the, roadblocks I had that happen last year and um you know the buyer's like why are they making it so hard <laughs> do, do they not want to sell well I don't know I'm not the listing agent but if you want the house we have to just keep moving forward you know like yeah I'm going to share a screen here um this is a thing I I have in my um in both my listing presentation and my buyer's presentation. Oh, where is that sharing? That's not sharing. There it is. So there's this quote, and it's been attributed to Goeth as well as William oh, Hutchinson yeah. Murray. But I share this with my clients, and I really hope that they understand it. It's And we talk woo-woo a little bit, but I think it's more than woo-woo. I think when there's psychological resistance to doing something, uh, you put up your own roadblocks. So until one's committed, there's hesitancy. There's the chance to draw back, and there's ineff always ineffectiveness. So concerning all acts of initiative and creation, there is one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans, that the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred, a whole stream of events issues from the decision, raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidents, meetings, and material existence, which no man could have dreamed, man or woman, could have dreamed would come his way. Whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. I just like that because to me, uh, I see it happen all the time with buyers and with sellers in terms of how much hesitation or commitment they have to the process. 
And um, so I think it's a really great share, a really great thing to share with, uh, with clients. Because I want to know when I'm working with someone, if they're really committed. Yeah. It, and, you know, uh, even as a listing agent, if you sense that your seller is not into it, mm. it's hard to sell a property. Yeah. So and it's, it's true, though, that selling a property is an emotional roller coaster. And we go through waves of like, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing or I really hate this. And I don't want to have to keep my home clean for the, you know, again and again for these showings that keep getting feedback that it's not for them or I don't like the floor plan or can you only send people that have, you know, pre-qualified and make sure that they've read all the listing and seen the floor plans. And, um, you know, I only want people who are working with serious realtor, you know, I don't serious buyers, serious buyers. And yeah, well, let me tell you, everybody, a realtor is not going to waste their time if a buyer isn't ready, willing and able to purchase. Generally not. Generally not. Generally not. Okay. So our next show, which will hopefully be a better one than this show. <laughs> it wasn't a bad one, but my dog is not cooperating with me. I am i don't know if you know, it's my left shoulder. It's moving. <laughs> I have had to pet her for 40 minutes now. <laughs> um, so when do you want to do the next show? I think we're doing our next show in January. Yeah. We're take a break. January 10th. Sounds good. Okay. And shall we have some people on? Do you want to have any guests? Let's talk about it over the holidays. Um, I, that, we can always bring a mortgage broker back in. I think there's going to be some interesting changes coming in the new year. That's probably a good thing to, to launch with. Okay. I'm sorry I've been distracted. You've been great. It's all good. Gingerella. <sighs> okay. So, and are you doing anything special for the holidays? Uh, visiting with friends. Going to have family over on the 25th. Um, not going anywhere. Working. And um, that's going to be about it. Yourself. I'm going to be walking the dog. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we're hanging out with friends. I'm just trying to connect with people again. I feel like I've, I've really been a hermit. So just trying to do stuff, even if it's an, a walk outdoors or, mm -hmm. um, you know, meet at a pub and just say hi and just see friends I haven't seen in a while. Pay attention to people again hey well we, you know maybe um we won't be doing a public show in the coming weeks but jane maybe you and i could meet at a pub at uh, 10 a.m on a monday <laughs> sure let's do it <laughs> maybe 10 p.m 10 p.m yeah uh, that's a little late for me <laughs> okay let's do it all good all right guys Thanks so much for coming. Uh, Jane, how would somebody reach you if they're trying to reach out to you? Oh, thank you, darling. Hey, everybody. It's Jane Johnston. You can call me at 250-744-0775. You can reach me at briarhillgroup at gmail.com. And you can visit one of my two websites at briarhillgroup.com, which talks about buying and selling real estate. Or if you want to talk about Vancouver Island lifestyle, please go to VancouverIslandTime.com. Andrew. You can reach me at uh, my cell phone or text 250-360-6106. Email me info at andrewplank.com. So that's just my name, info at andrewplank.com. Check out my website, andrewplank.com. Maybe not as exciting as Jane's or as comprehensive, but still, you know, there's some good, useful stuff there. And uh, best of all, reach out to one of us because we're happy to help and happy to have these conversations offline as well as online. Yeah, and I, I suggest you do want to work with Andrew because he's awesome. <laughs> and Jane. Thank and you. Wendy Coleman says thanks. Awesome. All thanks, right, Wendy. Wendy. Have a good holiday, everybody. We'll see you in the new year. Andrew, drinks are on me. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Take care. Have a great year. <laughs> Have a great, yeah, rest of the year.
Okay. Happy holidays. Bye. Bye.